I think floor is a better medium just because you can nail into that and put any kind of floor down that you would want to. Then you can still put epoxy on top of it or put uh, elastomeric membrane, spray in a membrane and put a floating floor on top of that. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do. I was wondering, you know, when we talk about the floor with the heated floor, you're talking about gravel and a, and a membrane and then insulation and then concrete with the tubes inside, you know, and rebar and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, I didn't know how, if I don't see the benefit of having the shipping container if you've got to do all the same work other than for the sidewalls. But you're essentially ending up with a 5 eighths or a 5 inch structure that you can tack weld rebar to, feed your hydronic radiant heat through, and then pour concrete over it. So that way you take out the forming costs. So really, you will have pilings ever so often to support the total load of the structure. However, that shipping container becomes your, your frame. He's been doing my concrete work for years. He ultimately thinks it will be a continuous pour, pour in place situation like that would be cheaper than pouring a slab with a foundation that has to be supported continuously around the edge and then in the middle of the low points because we're able to pick and choose once we get the building design where we can put pilings or piers or pilasters or whatever you want to call it to be able to take that way. So for like our classroom with a, I think you guys were talking 40 foot boxes. Um, 20 by 40. You could set piles at, at what would be the corners where you mm -hmm. would traditionally support the container. So across through what you got four piles on each end and then do a continuous pour, you know, have the floors out, mm -hmm. cut the walls out of it, you've still got the structure of the beam there on the side. We well, also actually two beams together really because yeah. two containers. Mm -hmm. And then you could tack in some rebar and stuff, tie all the, the uh, tubing to that and then just do a continuous pour in there. Mm -hmm. hmm. From one side to yeah, the other. Yeah, that's cool. There's actually going to be more piers than just on the corners because... We just set some in the middle? We set some in the middle. You would want to be able to kind of zone that floor out to make sure that each part of that floor has a higher rating per square foot when you break it down into the quarter than it does the whole floor, if that makes sense. So if we're trying to attain a value of, let's say, 80 to 100 pounds per square foot, which I believe is overkill for a one-story structure. That's just for easy numbers. I would like to see us be able to create a quarter of a load rating of, let's say, 20 or 40 pounds more than that. That's to anticipate maybe a group project where if you have 30 kids and 20 of them are in a corner, we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, but the container itself is rated for more than that before you start cutting the sidewalls Before out. you start cutting the sidewalls out. And so us being able to model right. that and right. understanding load and understanding movement and weight distribution, sure. that's going to be the key. Actual the performance that you get long term, it's antimicrobial, it's antibacterial. I mean, it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic substance uh, or material. And you can obviously tell the installers knew what they were doing because it's not necessarily what material you use, it's how you install that material that ultimately makes it look good. Or How would you handle wind loads on a project like Prodigy Academy? It just depends on what we end up coming up with. So we have a guy in Arizona that does a 3D modeling type thing, right? And so basically what we have to do is we have to get him a building design, okay? He has some load ratings from shipping containers in there. And then he puts that design under stress, okay? And he gives us, a, uh, he gives us more or less a value range that we're going to be in between, okay? So, in a situation like this in our duplexes, we actually are framing an interior structure inside the exterior structure, okay? One, because it's, it's speed, okay? We're able to do it much quicker than if we had to weld and fabricate. Kind of like I told you, we're cutting out that floor and we're, we're basically, we're, we're building a, a wood structure inside the other structure that we were able to insulate and we're able to do all that stuff. So ultimately, we automatically have the wind loads of what a normal stick frame house would have. We just happen to have steel on the outside that's eighth, eighth inch thick. Is, is the steel then just uh, a, a siding material? In, in some situations, yes. Yeah. Some situations it's siding, some situations it's a finished interior wall mm -hmm. if you like the way it looks. 